This is a presentation about the Financial Audit Report Hospital and Health Services 2015-16 Results of Financial Audits, Report No. 9 for the Financial Year 2016-17. This is a summary of the report to Parliament. The full report can be read on our website. We provided unqualified audit opinions on the financial statements of all entities this year. This means that their financial statements were prepared according to the requirements of legislation and Australian accounting standards and can be relied upon. 14 of the 16 HHSs made no adjustments to key balances in their draft financial statements before we certified them. While only half of the HHSs provided a complete draft of their financial statements to us by agreed dates, we still provided our audit opinions within the legislated deadline. HHSs need to improve the timely completion of both their asset valuations and preparation of early draft financial statements. This year, we did not identify any significant or high-risk internal control weaknesses in the sector. We did raise 125 internal control deficiencies for management to address. Of these, 55% were also reported to management in prior years. HHSs need to resolve these issues promptly, as continuing delays may expose the HHSs to increased risk of fraud or error. Unresolved control deficiencies principally related to agreeing complete service level agreements with the Department of Health as their shared service provider, tailoring financial management practice manuals, managing contracts, approving expenditure transactions and monitoring expenses. We also performed a detailed assessment at four HHSs of the maturity of their IT disaster recovery capabilities. Three of the four HHSs were immature. We recommended that all HHSs assess their own maturity, identify areas for improvement and initiate plans to implement improvements required. Expenditure growth has outpaced revenue growth in the sector, resulting in a decline in operating results. The most significant expense for all HHSs is their staff costs, representing 67% of total expenses. HHSs continue to experience increasing demand for their services and have hired additional staff in response. These staff and wage increases from industrial agreements caused employee expenses to increase by 12% compared to 2014-15. The Australian and Queensland governments funded a combined 89% of total revenue to HHSs. Revenue from these sources increased by 10% compared to 2014-15 to help meet increased demand. Reimbursements from the Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme increased by $134 million or 56% primarily due to the March 2016 listing on the scheme of high cost drugs to treat hepatitis C. Demand for healthcare has increased across all HHSs, growing by 26% to 1.2 million hospitalisations in the four years to 2015-16. Population growth, the ageing population and the increase in admission rates are factors that drove this growth and are the drivers for future demand for healthcare. The challenge for HHSs is to meet the growing demand for health services while managing their costs. HHSs are aware of this challenge and are looking for ways to increase capacity in public hospitals and reduce costs while also improving the quality of care. Continued increases in demand for health services may impact HHS sustainability unless they can improve their efficiency or find additional revenue sources. Australian and Queensland government funding for healthcare has increased by 20% over the last four years. From 1 July 2017, the Australian government will fund 45% of efficient growth in public hospitals, subject to a new national cap of 6.5% growth per year. This means that 2016-17 is the final year for HHSs to earn uncapped additional funding from the Australian Government for growth in services. All HHSs also face challenges in determining the correct level of asset maintenance to maximise the life and service potential of their buildings. Half of the HHSs did not achieve their targeted maintenance spend during 2015-16. The rural and remote HHSs also have a large number of older buildings, typically requiring higher levels of maintenance. 
For HHSs with limited resources, striking the right balance between maintaining assets and providing clinical service is an ongoing challenge. Digital hospitals use electronic rather than paper records that integrate with digital medical devices to enable clinicians to easily review and update patient information. Two Queensland hospitals went digital in 2015-16, with a further five digital hospital implementations underway. Implementing digital hospitals is a significant investment across the sector that may put additional pressure on future financial operations. Thank you for listening. We trust this presentation has been of value. For more information on the issues highlighted in this summary presentation, please see the full report, Hospital and Health Services 2015-16 Results of Financial Audits, available on our website under Reports and Resources at qao.qld.gov.au.